uh, one of the things that makes Game Maker easy to use is that they have all of these tutorials, like right out of the gate. In fact, hmm, we have my first game. So quite literally, they walk you through what you need to know in order to do this. You do not need to program. You will learn a, a fair bit about it. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the demos, which these are completed games. Um, anybody have a, a particular one you want to see? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah. okay, let's open up Angry Cat Space. Yeah. All right, so it's, it's loading the environment, and there's a couple things I want to show you with this once it comes up. But we will actually run the game, too. Um, is that I can actually... See, I, you probably can't read that. It's hard for me to make it bigger. But what it says there is create application. By the way, this environment works on, I'm running Windows. If you're using a Mac, it runs on Mac as well. So I'm not sure, I assume everything's probably more or less in the same places. Um, but if I hit create application, it's not gonna, it's gonna create a Windows app. But if I pull this little drop down here, it has Windows, Mac OS X, HTML5, iOS, Android, Windows 8, JavaScript, Windows 8 native, Windows Phone, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, there's a couple variants for the new Samsung Tizen platform. There is, and then they also mention Windows and Android and iOS. And they, they have YYC there, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I have the master collection. So just a side note, there is a free version of this product. Uh, Microsoft, because they're trying to get people to you know to build stuff for Windows 8, they have worked a deal where you can build for Windows 8 with with Game Maker free. So if you wanted to be in Microsoft Store, you can do that. Um, you can. There is a standard edition that gets you a few more things. Um, there is a which is 50 bucks. There is a pro version for 100 bucks. It, it goes up. I have the master collection, which I believe is now like about $700, but that gives me everything future in the and the past. So I actually bought it when it was 500. Is, is it 800 right now? So, uh, but what happens is once you have Pro, then you can then you buy add-ons for various things that you want to do. Um, they have to make money too. Yes. By the way, I want this to be interactive. So before hold your thought, Brenda. I want this to be interactive. So if you have a question, you know, to be honest with you. We're going to build a game in here today. Um, I don't know what game we're going to build. I have no idea. And it's a little scary for me to say that because, you know, I, it's a little scary for me to say that. Uh, but we're going to try. We're going to, we're going to hack around and we're going to see what we can do. So with that said, you know, feel free, free please interrupt me. Yes, Brenda. Uh, so uh, do they have what kind of school pricing? Uh, they, they do have school pricing as well, and I don't know. Uh, I've seen an eight-year-old working with it, so, and I imagine even younger. Uh, he was a decently smart eight-year-old, but no, not your brother, but yes, his brother also. Yes. Um, there is some socialization. There are some analytics, so I'm not sure what all... Yes, they're, they, one of the things that's kind of cool that they've done along the way is they have worked with some third parties to kind of pre-build some things in. It's actually not too hard. If you know a little bit of, you know, if it's like basically HTML calls, all of that's kind of built in. So it's, once you learn the environment, it's really not that hard to, to kind of wire up what you needed to do. So I'm, I am, I should, I, you know, I should, I should tell you all, I uh, run the Tampa Bay Windows Dev user group. Um, I'm on the Microsoft stack, but I also do Android and I do iPhone and I do native. I make that very clear. I am a native guy. So that means I code, you know, in some difficult, well, Objective-C was a real task for me. So, um, so but that said, um, I came to this thing and I went, wow, I'm going to do this thing with this cute little toy. And the moment, once I started playing with the demo, I went, wow, this is cool. I showed it to my son, who is the red-haired boy over there. Hi. And 
he, he did the first demo. He and I worked through the first tutorial, not together, but separately. He then went off and built a game, and Microsoft was giving money away, and they had some um, contests running, and he pulled $600 out of his game. So, you know, obviously that's not money that he made out of the marketplace. He made it because Microsoft's trying to get apps, but you know what? I don't care how you look at that. $600 is $600. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, have you with Unity? I have so just started to look at Unity. My suspicion is Unity is a little more hardcore. Um, not saying that you can't get into it. Um, Unity probably does 3D. Well, not probably. It does do 3D a whole lot easier than this. Yes. Yeah, and they have a 2D version coming that's going to actually compete with this. So, yes, they are competitors, and yes, very much so. They ha they have a new 2D coming, so we'll see how that works. But yes. So it's like um, Unity version available now, but it just has higher resolution. The new Studio version is Windows only. You can compile from that. From oh really? Older games they currently available on Windows and Mac. You just compile them from that. That's like twenty bucks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, really. Hmm. Yeah, that's like Windows only. Oh, that's Windows only. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
turn it on here and maybe we'll hear something. All right. I think it crashed too. I think something bad happened there. Anyways, let's try. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Let's try running it Windows 8 native just to see what happens. And of course, I just updated the environment, so you know what you know what that means. It means that there's a new bug that I didn't know about, and because I didn't try it at ahead of time. Yeah, I just saw something pop up there. It's like this shouldn't happen. Number two, great. <laughs> so one of the things in this, while it's compiling, and this actually shows you, is it has built in something called a physics library. Yeah, wow, that's well, we can almost see it, but. There you go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this down, and we'll, we'll go back out to our environment. And let's create a new one. So what kind of game do we want to build? Do we want to build a shoot 'em up Do we want to build some kind of platformer? Do we want to build the simple catch the clown game? I'm, I'm actually open. Anybody have any ideas? I guess my son wants to shoot him up, so I guess we'll build a shoot him up. If, if anyone is uh, anyone opposed, okay. Now, my first challenge with this is, and th this is the part where it's a little scary. I'm going to call this scary project in front of audience. Because we're going to have to find some graphics. Now, it just so happens I know where I have a spaceship, so we'll start with that. So let me go find some spaceship graphics real quick. These are things that, that I have pre-done and, and Um, online there's a whole bunch of free resources. They have some as well. I mean, you can use any of theirs. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there are a lot. I, it, it was actually mind blowing when I started looking for stuff that it was actually pr fairly easy to find things. So I happen to have on my machine right here, Josh. Okay. So. Yep. Any, any pretty pretty much any format. So let's um, let's just drag. I, this is a, a little spaceship graphic I have, and let's just drag him in here. And as you can see, it pops up immediately. It's like, what is this? So I'm going to say it's a sprite, and we'll call it um, SPR uh, ship. Yeah, it's just a game graphic. It's something you're going to put on the screen and move around. It's, it's going to be interactive. It may actually be a platform, but it's something that you want to interact. A background would be something that you put behind the scenes that isn't necessarily, uh, it's visible, but it's really just to, to kind of add color or background to the actual game. It, you don't really run into anything there. All right. I need something else to shoot. So let's. You know what? I have internet. Let's look for, what are we going to shoot? How about an a alien game graphic? Let's see what we find. I I'm, I'm probably shouldn't should have done this earlier, but we'll find out what we find. You want a cookie? Josh, you're killing my demo, man. Make a cake instead of a cookie? No, I'm not, I'm not going to have a good, good chance there. I like Alien. Actually, you know what? Let's look for Space Invaders. Space Invader art. That's what I need. We're going to take this guy right here.
because I'm not publishing this game, so I'm not going to worry about that. I could, but right now I'm trying to keep my demo moving along. Thank you. All right, so that's kind of, I don't know how good that's going to look. I'm not, I'm actually not too concerned about how things look right now. I'm going to, I'm actually going to import it and use their tools. So I have a sprite. And we're going to edit this guy because he's way too big to begin with. So I believe I've got to find the tool crop. All right, that did not work out the way I wanted to. All right, let me just crop it real quick outside of the tool. Sorry, everyone. All right, now I got to... Of course, I got a. There we go. There he is. There's our graphic. And we'll call him Invader. All right, so now we have an image. I should have done one more thing with him. Ah, darn Windows 8. One other thing I need to do here. Let me open it up with a different tool. I just need this to be a little bit smaller than what it is right now. And I opened the wrong one, of course. It's because it's Invader. All right, so right now, this thing is humongous. So let's edit in. There, now he's a little better size. So yeah, it helps to have image tools. There, there's, there's will work, and you can do what I, I was just trying to do, but I've forgotten how, and standing in front of a group of people trying to do this sometimes is a little more difficult. All right, so we're gonna call him SBR Invader. All right, so let me tell you a couple things I'm doing with him. I set his collision point to, we gotta talk about how our game's gonna work. I think we're gonna have, for right now, we're just gonna have one invader and he's gonna chase our, our ship, okay? Or maybe we'll just have him randomly move around. But he's eventually going to run into our ship and when he does that, he's gonna destroy our ship. But we need, there's, um, when they collide, we need to kind of figure out how that works. Now, we're not going to figure it out. The computer is going to figure it out. But what we want to do is we're setting the collision. I just I actually set it to, there's a button here that says center. It's essentially telling Game Maker that when, when I move this thing around and when I'm looking for where it is, it's in the center. So when it looks for when it collides, it's going to use the center to determine where, well, actually, it's going to use that to determine where it's moving. So for collision, um, we're going to leave the automatic settings, but you can actually go in here and tweak it, especially if you have an animation, you're going to want to play with that. But we're all beginners, so we don't really want to want to do anything like that. All right. We could add some sounds. We could add a background. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple, so we're going we're gonna to skip that part.
All right? So we really have how many objects do you think we're going to have? Two. You're right. So we'll create an object. Let's create our alien first. Or as I call him, calling him the invader. So he's called OBJ Invader. And really, we're going to do one thing with him. We're going to, in the, okay, so let me, let me back up a little bit about game development. Because I'm about to do something, but I need to explain it. There is a, in a game, there is what they call the game loop, which means that, that every, and it can run 30 times a second, it can run 60 times a second, it can run 10 times a second. It'll be a really slow looking game. But um, what we want to do is we have, during that time, it's going to do a bunch of things. So if so, it'll decide whether something collided. We can actually say if our alien collided with something, we want to do something with it. In this case, um, what I'm going to do is have it start to move towards the other side of the screen. Although now that it, now that my brain is thinking about it a little more, I don't need to do that. Let me let me back up. So I could do it that way. I could actually say move yourself to the left every every time, but I don't need to do that. Because with Game Maker, what I'm going to do is, when, when it gets created, so I have a create event. Everybody, is it self-explanatory what create means? It means that when I create a new alien and put him on my screen, I'm using the word invader, okay. When I create a new invader and I put him on the screen, I want to go ahead and set some things up for him before he moves. So what I'm going to do is over here, we have, a, we have events where I just create, did that create thing. We also have a column called actions, and that will change depending on what you have selected at events. That's the things that we want to proceed and, and happen, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to move, we're going to, we have, okay, back up. Over here are drag and drop stuff. I mentioned drag and drop. Well, what I want to do is I want to set the horizontal speed. So whenever I create the alien, I'm going to make him run off the edge of the screen. Okay? So he's going to start over here, and he's going to move, well, he's going to uh, start over here, and he's going to move this way. Okay? All right, now is vertical, well, we'll find out. So I'm going to make him move at negative two. So he's, he's starting, over here would be the highest, highest number, and so every step, he's going to move over two pixels, if you want to think about it that way. He's just going to move all on his own. In fact, we'll, to prove this, let's create a new room. We actually can start our game right now. Let's set our background to a black. And due to the screen resolution, let me see if I can figure out how to... Zoom this out a little bit. There we go. So right now, if I click, I've just created one of my aliens. Now, he's not very big. In fact, let's create a couple of them. Wait a minute. What's it creating? That's not him. Something's wrong. I told you it was an on-the-fly fly thing. He, We'll, we'll create the room again. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Red-headed boy, thank you. <laughs> yes, I forgot to associate the sprite. That's why nothing's happening. All right, so now let's create our room. See, we have a little, see the little color there. Let's create our room. Yes, that's good, 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 good. We'll set our color to black. We'll zoom out. Why is that not working? It's doing something weird. Okay, we'll, we'll. There we go. All right. So now, now when I click, there we go. We'll create a couple of monsters on the screen. Okay. 
And if I run this right now, which I'm going to do, but not in Windows 8 mode, and we cross our fingers and hope that it works, our aliens just move on their own without us doing anything. Now, there's one problem with this. Our aliens are now still moving. They've now moved off the screen, and they're still moving off into the computer, still tracking where they are. You know, who knows how far they are out. So we'll have to do something about that. And so what we're going to do is something pretty simple. So now we built our, our, our little alien. Let's, I'm looking to see my, let's see what other events I have. Is there an off-screen event? Outside room, that's what I want. So when we go outside the room, what I'm going to do is have it randomly pick some place at the other, at the, at the, in the room and start over again. Okay? Does that sound good? If you don't like it, too bad. No. All right. I forget what I set it to, so. All right. So here I'm, I'm actually typing in some script to make a random. Um, and I want the random Y. So I'm going to set him to 640. Say random. Actually, let's just leave him as, it, as is. Okay? And I think, just by doing that, so, sorry, I, I, I dropped into programmer ease. Some of you may have missed that, so let me explain. The room is 640 pixels long. It's actually 640 units. So it may be a pixel on, you know, on the iPhone, it'll be, you know, the resolution of the iPhone. Um, on whatever Android device you're looking at, Mac, et cetera, or on a Kindle Fire, yes. Um, anyways, it will, so 640 represents, again, it's the far, for me, right-hand side for you. Well, it'll be over here for you guys. It's over here for me, as I'm thinking. Um, so what's going to happen is the object moves. We'll do it like we did before. Moves across the screen. And when it gets off screen, it's going to jump back over here where it started from. And if we did well, it will work. So we'll try that. And there we go. We'll see what happens when the first ones go off. There we are. So now we have, in a sense, created a little scrolling shooter. All right. Very good. I don't know if you're impressed, but did, did it look like we did a lot of programming? Did it look like, did, is anybody confused? Are you following me? Did I jump past something? You look confused. Are you good? <laughs> OK. Did it feel difficult? Did you feel like you just programmed something? I know you didn't. I did, but. All right, let's now build, because we want to shoot now, right? So we're going to create a new, new sprite, or a new object, OBJ, and we'll call him player, OK? We're going to associate the sprite first. SPR ship. And actually, let me, that little center thing sometimes throws me off, so I'm going to put that in there as well. Now, we got to do a little bit of programming with this guy. Not too much. But the simplest thing we got to worry about is if he collides with, with the invader, we want him to die. And we're, we could put, make an explosion. There's a bunch of really cool things we could do. We're beginners, so we're just going to, just going to, and in fact, I'm trying to decide what we want to do. Let's end the game. So in other words, you get one life, okay? You get one shot at this. So we're just going to end the game. So let me find that. So that is, by the way, these are tabs along the side. So that's actually a control. And if I can remember where it is, it's not in score. It's not in health. Actually, we can just end, well, actually, you know what we'll do? We will remove a life. Is it this one? No. 
That would be helpful, but that's not what we're looking for. Sorry, bear with me. Ah, here it is. So, and it, we're going to have to actually set a, a number of lives to begin with, okay, uh, which we'll put that in the create event. But what we want to do here is we want to set new lives. We're going to set lives to, to negative one, but we're going to use relative. It's the first time we're using this. So in Game Maker, they always have that checkbox for relative. Relative means, do you want me to set it? So in this case, it means, do you want me to set it exactly to this value? Or, right, so relative means if I had a one there, it would add a life. Okay, well, that's kind of not what we want it to do. If I put in a negative one, what it does is then it, it, it basically adds negative one to how much is there. So it's actually zero, you know, however many it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to subtract a life. Does that make sense? <coughs> All right. Um, so that's, let me go ahead and add our create event real quick, and we'll, we'll add our lives. How many lives should we give them? Three? Three? Okay. Three it is. All right, so when the game starts, the player will get created, they get three lives, okay? Um, when the invader collides with them, you know what, there's something else we've got to do with that invader. Because, and think about this with me, I got my ship, I got my invader, or however, and he hits, okay? But he hits like maybe two pixels in. I die, okay? I recreate my player in the same place, <laughs> and it goes the next, it moves the next step, and now maybe it's only two pixels on on the other end, I die again because I've collided. So we got to do something with that invader. So we're going to kick the invader back out like we did to start with. So we're going to use the jump, which is this guy. No, not move towards. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So, and I used that earlier. I didn't explain that to you. Um, it's called, it's jump to position. So I can essentially tell him to be anywhere on the screen that I want to put him, and even off the screen. In this case, I'm going to move him to just back to where he was before, just back out here. And I still got to move towards, so let's delete that. Okay. Oh, and you know what else I did wrong? I'm moving myself, so I just moved my player out there. That's not what I want to do. I want to move the other object. So in a collision, there are two objects. There is, there is your object that's responding to it, and then there's the other object. So. We can also move some other object altogether, which is interesting, but we are also missing another, another element to this, but it's okay, because we're getting the good concepts here. Um, what else do we need to have happen? You know what? Let's run our game and find out. What are we missing? Unless somebody knows. Oh. You know what else we're missing? I know one of the things we're missing. We don't have a player on here. So let's, let's create our player. It's OK, him. By the way, it'll, it should automatically select. I like to check, but he should automatically have selected him, but he didn't. All right, so now i got a player. Let's zoom this back out so I can see what's going on. There we go. Let's put our player right here. OK. Let's run. So here we go. Anybody know what's missing? What's that? Uh, well, well, yeah, we, when we run out of lives, we will, we're going to have to do something about that. That's for sure. What else? What, what else is a, would this be a fun game to play at this point? Yeah. We can't move. Yes, we can't move. Exactly. So let's, let's fix that problem first. Why? Well, I'm <laughs> right. So one of the things we want to do, and we're going we're gonna to do my, my cheat method here. So we want to add an event. It's one of the other events. And it is, I have no more lives. Okay. So that's an event that happens. So I've run out of lives. 
And all we're going to do there is we're going to put something up on the screen that says, as soon as I figure, find where that is, there's a way to write, on, write a little message to the user on the screen that says, um, and I'm just going to say, game over. There it is, this little box, game over, and then I want to do um, restart game, just like that. So there's that, but you're right, we need to be able to move. Let's work on moving up and down right now, okay? So we're going to do a keyboard, and see, so... Right out of the box, we can we can do all kinds of things here. We'll use um, this keyboard. I want. I think key press is actually better. And so we want up and down. So we'll go ahead and create those two events. How am I doing on time? I got ten minutes. I think we're I think we're doing good. All right. Let's just move fix, so to go up. So our screen starts in the upper um, left-hand corner at zero, zero, and runs to the bottom corner at whatever, whatever. You know, because we can change that in the room. There, in the room settings, you can change that. So when we go up, we're actually going negative from where, where it is. But what we want to do is and actually, this is not what I want. Actually, we're just going to use a jump, too. We're going to do the relative thing. And so we're going to move up two. And we're not going to move, or no, we're going to, yeah, hang on. We're going to move up two, not left or right. Uh, why are you um, move actually starts you moving in a direction, and you don't stop. Yes. And in fact, there is a physics, li physics library built into this thing. So like you can actually, if you're a physics expert, which I'm not, um, you can actually kind of model your, your objects in the screen and say this is this side or whatever. And they will actually float all on their own and interact with solid surfaces. And, and in fact, we can make things bounce off walls without even using that. Yes. And you're right, that is going to be a problem that happens. I'm not going to worry about it right now, because normally what you would do is you would have a, a opening screen that says, you know, play the game. And in that case, when I restart the game, I'm going to go back to that opening screen, so I'm not going to start right in the game. So, but you are correct, that is a problem. All right, so we're going to do, I'm going to actually show you something kind of cool. We're going to copy that jump command, and we're going to come out down here where it says down. And again, relative, so add to. Now, I could put some things in to say, if I've gone beyond the top of the screen, don't do anything. Or if I've gone below, we're building a simple game. And remember, did I start out knowing I was going to build this demo? Those of you who've been with me the whole time, no, I did not. I had help from the peanut gallery, AKA my son. Now, as you can see, and I picked the wrong event, because I have to click each time. I can move up, but it's not doing exactly what I want. I, I used the wrong event. So I want, let's, let's add the right event. I want keyboard uh, up. And the nice thing about this is if I grab the wrong event, I can actually just, using control X and, and control V, I should be able to Paste it, paste things around. Keyboard down. So it's really, I can also, I believe, just drag this thing around. I guess not. You can also copy whole events. All right, so let me delete these. Oh, 
right here, delete, delete, okay. And we're ready to go. Now, isn't it cool? We don't have to go back to the room. We don't have to do anything like that. It just starts. Oh, we're running. Whoops. See how much faster I move now? Again, has anybody in the room done any, any programming and anything, anything else? Okay. And was it this easy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask this question. Anybody done anything like X and A or C++ or DirectX? Was it this easy? Why not? I mean, it's just simple to build a game. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> why is it that hard? I mean, you know, <laughs> I know why it's that hard. Um, so let's let's um, let's drag in my bullet graphic since I know where it is now. This may be tricky. Let's see if I can just drag this guy in as is. So I have a bullet sprite that I created for something else. I want to see if I can just drag him in. I did. Cool. So let me show you something about this bullet. This is hand drawn, but it's three images. Let's see if I can get him big enough that we can actually see him here. Probably not. Come on. All right. Well, you have to believe me. They are all different. They are, it does look a little different. All right. So for right now, let's fire a bullet. So when the user hits space, as soon as I find it, Oh, duh. Let's look for it right there. We're going to create a bullet at the front of our spaceship and shoot it out. Okay? So, again, we come over here. There is, it's in main one. I got to find it here. Yep. This little light bulb creates an instance of some other object. So, it, so in other words, we're going to add to the room something that wasn't there before. And right now there's no object, and you know what? We haven't created the object yet. So let's hit cancel. And our bullet You know, we're getting short on time, so I'm going to I'm going to hold up. I think you all are starting to get the idea of how easy this is to use. Now, what's cool about it is, for all of this stuff that I've been doing, I could actually just drag this in here. Is this what your programming normally looks like? <laughs> so literally, I can build code. It uses its own, called GML script, which, as I told, mentioned earlier, you can actually, it actually compiles in some areas, like iPhone, um, Android, uh, Windows 8, I forget what other, but those are the three that come off the top of my head. Um, it's kind of JavaScript, it's JavaScript variant, um, for lack of a better way to describe it. You can do things like a var and that kind of thing, those of you who've programmed before. Um, but it's kind of cool because it's very easy to go from like, So my object is self, which all of the dialogues refer to the object I'm in as self. And like, uh, I can control something called direction, which is something we, we, we dealt with earlier. But that's actually, it'll actually translate moving your sprite around on the screen. In other words, the, 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 so in other words, I have a bullet going this way. I could turn it and have it go that way. 
Um, oh, I know which one. It has H speed. Anyone guess? That's the same thing as when we were creating our alien and moving him across the screen and we said, your speed horizontal is this. So we can actually, you know, things that we've been doing, we can do here and it translates pretty quickly. Your brain goes, oh yeah, yeah, I know about that, I know about that. Um, I'm not actually gonna write in, co in our code, I'm trying to think. Yes, they, they, they're, they're interchangeable. I guess, what, I guess my point is that all of the drag and drop stuff that we did translates into actual script commands that happen. Um, you can actually build your own little scripts and drop them in and, and address them as if they're part of the language. So there's some very interesting things you can do with it. Um, while I'm finishing up real quick, let me show you in here. So this, I just clicked on the global game setting. These are, this is where I go to set things up to make it work for Android, for Windows Phone, for whatever. iPhone, sorry, I keep leaving you guys out. I don't mean to. <laughs> but anybody build any iPhone apps in the room? Okay, cool. I'm um, going to ask you a question here. So how, what kind of images do you need to, to put in the app store? I'm giving you a hint. <laughs> so basically, you come in here and you give it the data that, that you need for the App Store itself. Um, I believe this is where I put my certs. It is. Um, my, you know, I can, I, you know, I have a splash screen that loads up automatically. I just, you know, add the graphics here. So it's not, I, 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 don't wanna, I don't want you all to think that it's trivial because there are some things to do. There are definitely some things to do. Windows 8 is a challenge unto itself. I, I, I tend to think that everything else is probably simple compared to what they make you do for that, but it's getting better. Um, uh, but it's actually, like I said, it's actually really cool, the things you can do with it. Um, let me open up my my other project here since I since I finally found it I started to run it earlier and I, I tried to open it from the wrong place ah open project sure save for changes thank you because when the next speaker comes I'm out so is there any other questions Uh, there are some, but I don't know what they are off the top of my head. If you go to their site, they'll they'll tell you what some of them are. I wouldn't say there's a ton, but when you actually see it, you're like, oh wow, I've seen that. Go ahead. You were um, on this uh, thing you created real quick. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember that in iOS? Did you have to go and change all the uh, controls or like space would have to be like a button on the screen? A a as luck would have it. Oh, are you kidding me? And that's what I'm trying to launch. <laughs> All right, let me launch it in JavaScript mode. I think it'll let me do that. So this is a Windows Touch laptop, OK? So you may not have noticed, but I've been touching the screen a little bit along the way. And if we cross our fingers and hope, um, it should deploy. Yes. So I have my. You can't, okay, never mind. I updated Game Maker, so evidently it did that. But basically, I have an on-screen joystick you can skin, and it would do exactly what you're thinking. I've got an on-screen button, so you can literally put a bunch of buttons. You could even have multiple joysticks with it. And yeah, it translates into, I want this to call, you know, I want this to be space, I want this to be. So they have some stuff in there where you can actually map physical screen coordinates whenever the user touches here, you know, make this, you know, be a space or a left key or whatever. Is, is that pretty much hinged to the client system? Or do you have to program that yourself? Uh, you will have to program that yourself. It recognizes like four touch points. So, um, and that's what I had to do with this. No, four. Um, it recognizes four touch points. And so when you're looking at it, you have to look at every, you know, position. But yeah, to do a gesture, I don't know. 
So is the next speaker here yet? No? Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Uh, you learn a little bit? You Interesting. I'm surprised there isn't a Mac version. I'm going to have to beat them up over that because their website's been kind of yeah, funky. Yeah, I can't. Well, because the Yo-Yo compiler doesn't work on Windows, so that's why I'm kind of confused. It's the last year, but they've just come through a new iteration point, so maybe that that very thing is the problem because they they were been talking about this whole compiler thing. By the way, um, I don't have the video, and I'm not going to bring it up that quick. I can tell it, but they. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to you in a moment. We, we, we featured you earlier. Um, <laughs> I, I, what I want to say about it is that with the compiler, one of the things they showed was a game that was a typical kind of thing. It was, uh, they had zombies and it was like a street. You know, it was an overhead street scene. You had a guy running around shooting the zombies. Okay, that's the game. Um, and they show it and it's like, okay, here's the game. Here's 100 zombies chasing the guy around. And I mean, it's, you can tell it's, it's running about as fast as it can because there's a couple points where it stutters. Then they do, they expand the scene out, <laughs> and they add 10,000 zombies after they've compiled it, and it runs smooth. So I can't, ima I can't imagine there not being a Mac version soon, if there isn't. Thank you for coming to the scariest presentation I have ever done.